Numerous studies have demonstrated learning in a variety of types of invertebrates, including insects, spiders, and gastropods. But how about learning in mites, members of the subclass Acari? In this video, I'll summarize one study, EGAS et al. 2003, that was done on the spider mite, Tetronychus urdosi. There are a few other papers on mite learning, including by predatory mites. Since predators tend to be smarter than non-predators, I wanted to see whether even herbivorous mites were capable of learning. The introduction of EGAS et al. 2003 says, quote, For herbivorous arthropods, learning may play an important role in selection of host plants for feeding and or overposition. Two distinct kinds of learning can be identified, non-associative and associative learning. Non-associative learning involves a gradual change in response to a conditioning stimulus. The response can either wane, habituation, or increase, sensitization. Both types of learning have been observed in herbivorous arthropods, e.g. habituation of Schistocerca gregaria to a feeding deterrent, and rejection by locusta nymphs of unpalatable leaf material at a progressively earlier stage in food selection with experience. In associative learning, behavior is changed due to an unconditioned stimulus, which has become associated with a conditioned stimulus. Recently, studies have shown associative learning in several species of moths and one grasshopper species. Recently, EGAS and Sibelis, 2001, reported on the fitness effects of host preference learning in the two-spotted spider mite, Tetronychus urdosi koch. Individual mites from two strains were repeatedly given a choice between two host plants, tomato and cucumber, and then subjected to a performance test on each. During the three consecutive choice tests, mites of both strains learned to prefer cucumber over tomato. The performance test showed that cucumber allowed for higher overposition, higher survival, and faster development than tomato. In this paper, we test whether the mite strains are also able to distinguish differences in food quality within one host. Specifically, we used cucumber plants with various degrees of feeding damage in tests of preference and performance to investigate whether experience affects food choice and whether such changes in food choice result in fitness benefits. When behavior changes with experience, such that reproductive performance is improved, we refer to this process as adaptive learning. We are not concerned here with mechanisms underlying the change in behavior with experience, e.g. associative learning, sensitization, etc. Hence, throughout this paper, we use the term learning in a general sense." End quote. EGAS et al. 2003 did two different experiments, but I'll just talk about the second one, which involved three rounds of choice tests between leaves of different quality. Quote, to measure small-scale food preference of mites, individual choice arenas were made by putting together two leaf disc halves, each of a different treatment, with an insect pin in the center. Adult females were put on top of the pin with a fine brush. Pilot experiments with this setup showed that the mites readily descend from the pin and inspect both leaf disc halves by walking and occasionally probing. Generally, mites settle at one site within approximately one hour and do not change leaf halves for the next 24 hours. This is because they invest time and energy in colonizing a site. End quote. The researchers looked at what side the mites ended up on. Then they repeated this two more times on fresh arenas. The basic result was that mites who initially ate more damaged cucumber leaves were more likely to switch to less damaged leaves on subsequent trials than vice versa. Here you can see a general trend that over the three rounds of testing, mites tended to stop settling down on the more damaged leaves. An anthropomorphic interpretation 
is that the mites learned on early trials that the damaged leaves didn't leave them feeling as good, so they avoided them more next time. The authors also found that mites laying eggs on less damaged leaves laid more eggs, often dramatically more. In the paper's discussion, Egas et al. 2003 say, quote, in the course of the three small-scale choice tests, preference shifted towards the less damaged food. This provides compelling evidence for a learned preference where mites learn to avoid the more damaged food and to prefer the less damaged food. The experiments in this study were not set up to distinguish between associative and non-associative mechanisms of learning. Given the current data, sensitization and or habituation are more parsimonious hypotheses for the learning mechanism because they do not assume a causal relationship between the increase in preference for the higher quality food. However, several recent studies on learning in T. urdice besides this one, using various different food plants, have shown positive correlation between learned preference and performance. Therefore, to us, this would suggest associative learning, specifically food aversion learning, as the mechanism underlying adaptive learning in T. urdice. End quote. Personally, I didn't fully understand the paragraph just quoted. I think it's trying to say that because the food preferences are adaptive, they're more likely the result of associative conditioning, where the good food is more rewarding because of its evolutionary fitness value, whereas non-associative sensitization or habituation wouldn't be shaped by evolution to be fitness enhancing in the same way. Rather, the learned changes might be more random. But that's not necessarily true since non-associative learning could also be tuned to be adaptive, I assume. In any case, the study's authors understand the situation better than I do, and it's interesting that they suspect that associative learning may be operating here. For more explanation of food aversion learning, I'll read from one of the articles cited by Egas et al. 2003. Quote, it is now well known that, among vertebrates, learned associations develop between the taste of a food and a subsequent nausea or other negative internal effect, and such a food becomes unacceptable. Characteristic of this type of learning is the relatively long delay between the taste and the visceral effect, often many hours. Learned avoidance of nutritionally deficient food was first described for rats about 50 years ago. Well, Garcia et al., 1961, first demonstrated the ability of rats to associate a novel food taste with sickness, caused in various ways, occurring up to several hours later. Learned responses to nutrient deficiency or to specific noxious effects of ingested food are now considered as part of the same spectrum of food aversion learning. Few studies have dealt with food aversion learning in insects, and even fewer adhere to experimental designs that allow an unequivocal interpretation of learning. It is clear, however, that food preferences alter with experience, and that on occasion, acceptability of a food markedly declines with experience of it. Such declines in acceptability of a food probably often reflect aversion learning. Because there is often a time delay between sensory patterns associated with food intake and the negative consequences of ingestion, it is to be expected that certain patterns of feeding will enhance the likelihood of aversion learning. For example, discrete meals on single food items will allow associations to be made more readily than grazing on a mixture of foods within a meal. Generalist predators such as mantids and carabids are examples of insects that take discrete meals on particular items with long inter-meal gaps, while ground-dwelling scavengers such as crickets are species that probably feed on many miscellaneous items over a short period of time. Another feeding habit that may allow learned aversions to form 
is that of short-term fidelity to a particular resource, such that a learned aversion can develop over a series of meals on a single food type, whereupon rejection and movement away may follow if the food is unsuitable. Species that tend to rest on or near their food, as do most plant-feeding insects, are in this category. It may be that mobility is the most important factor determining the likelihood of aversion learning among insects in nature. If food aversion learning is considered simply part of a general ability to show learned avoidance responses to anything that has a negative influence, there is a good chance that the potential for such learning is widespread or even universal among insects, but that only some species in certain circumstances normally exhibit it. End quote. My best guess as to why the Egas et al. 2003 authors think the spider mites showed food aversion learning is that it seemed to take some time for the mites to figure out that the damaged foods were worse for them. The mites generally probed both sides of the choice arenas, but if it had been obvious from the taste which side was better, they would have gone to the better side on the first try. Rather, it took two or three tries on successive days for some of the mites to learn which side was better. Now some more from the EGAS et al. 2003 study. Its discussion section explains, quote, The mites do not immediately perceive plant quality in the small-scale setup, but need feeding experience on the plants to adjust their preference. Such learned responses are by no means self-evident, since learning is not the best response to every type of variable environment. Since the experiments with T. urticae reported here and in EGAS and Sebelis 2001 were performed in the laboratory, one may wonder whether adaptive learning is an ecologically relevant trait. However, there are good reasons to believe that learning in herbivorous arthropods is favored by selection in the field. On the smaller scale within one plant or even one leaf, differences in food quality will arise due to the colonizing habit of T. urticae. Spider mites live under a webbing and local groups gradually expand over the leaf and eventually the whole plant. Mites may then benefit by learning to find an undamaged part of a leaf or an undamaged leaf on the plant through association of food quality and taste or their internal physiological state. On the larger scale between plants, they enter novel environments, plants, while dispersing, unable to assess instantly what the environment has to offer. Moreover, given their small size relative to the plant, they are bound to visit new hosts sequentially, and hence build up experience in the process. Spider mites disperse aerially, land, and reach a plant by walking, whereupon they probe its food quality and have to decide whether to stay, to move on to a neighboring plant, or to become airborne again. At this stage, mites can use the previously experienced association between plant odors and food quality. Whether T. urticae actually can learn associatively, however, is still to be demonstrated experimentally. On theoretical grounds, the life history of T. urticae and its host plants provide almost perfect conditions for the evolution of learning. Stevens has shown that learning is most likely to evolve in systems with a high level of predictability within the lifetime of individuals, i.e. generations and a low between-generation predictability. For spider mites, the environment is easily envisaged as predictable within generations and changing between generations due to increased damage to the plant and eventually overexploitation. The evolution of learning is also promoted in situations where there is a high value of learning, i.e. a high potential of an experience to change behavior. Judged from the probabilities of switching hosts after one day of experience, the value of learning may be high for T. urticae. This makes sense because females invest time and energy, e.g. webbing, 
in colonizing part of a leaf and are not likely to colonize a new part very often in their lifetime. End quote. Finally, I'll briefly mention another study on T. urticae published in the same year as the EGAS et al. 2003 study, and it's by some of the same authors. It discusses induction of feeding preference, which is defined as, quote, when individuals prefer the host plant they have already experienced over one they have not experienced, end quote. The study concludes as follows, quote, this study provides evidence of induced preference and performance in the two-spotted spider mite T. urticae and shows that there is considerable variation in these two traits among strains. We suggest induced resistance to toxic secondary plant chemicals as one potential explanation for induced performance, which in itself suggests associative learning as the most likely candidate learning mechanism underlying induction of preference in this species. End quote.